Hi and welcome to the first of what we hope is many videos showing the playthrough of a Fistful Led Galactic Heroes game. Now we're setting up this little shot here to show a uh, rebel trooper who stumbled upon two commandos here, one that's hiding behind a wall and one that's kind of out in the open. It's the beginning of a turn. We start with kings and any player who has a king uh, activates a, one of his uh, miniatures. We're gonna activate this guy with a cane. So he has two actions when he activates. His first action, since he's already in close range with his uh, auto rifle there, we're gonna have him aim as his first uh, action. This will give him a plus one to all subsequent actions. Because he's within close range and he has an automatic weapon, he has the option of using burst fire. A burst fire allows him to spray an entire area if it's within close range, trying to hit as many targets as possible. So that's what he's gonna do with his second shot. And we're gonna check by using our handy dandy template here. And we see that both of these commandos fall within this inner ring that is where the burst fire template is. So he's gonna roll individually for each one of these soldiers that are underneath the template. He has a minus one when he uses his burst fire. This is due to the fact that he's spraying indiscriminately, trying to cover an area, not picking out a specific target. So his plus one has now been negated by the minus one of the burst fire. He normally needs a five or above. He gets a six. So this uh, model has been hit. His second shot, not only is it a minus one for uh, the burst fire, but it's also another minus one because this guy is behind cover. So that makes him in a negative two, but the plus one framing makes him in a negative one. He rolls and managed to get a seven, which is another hit. Now we roll to see what happens to the guys that he hit. Now remember he used a burst fire, so now he is out of ammo. Next turn that means he has to spend both turns reloading unless he's lucky enough to have a six in his deck. So he rolls to see what happens to the first guy. He gets an eight, which is a wound. We're gonna place a wound marker beside him and lay him on his side. Now, if you don't want to have a bunch of battlefield clutter, you could actually put this little wound marker somewhere on his record sheet uh, to denote that he's wounded. Some people like to have it right out there. Now we're gonna roll to see what's gonna to happen to this guy. He only gets a two, so the two is a shock marker. Now, what shock is, is basically the model has been uh, freaked out by all the bullets flying past him and he's uh, a little bit discombobulated from the shots coming in. Well, we'll see what happens to him next here in just a minute. All right, so now we've come to the <clears throat> next part of the turn where we call out queens. We're gonna use the Queen of Hearts to activate this guy. Now, the Queen of Hearts acts as a special card which allows you to remove a wound from a character and allow them to stand up and still have both their actions. So this is exactly what we're gonna do. He's gonna stand up. We're gonna remove that wound marker and this guy still has two actions. So he's probably gonna to wanna to shoot at this guy. But he also knows that he didn't like being caught this close to one of his buddies in a burst template, so we're gonna use his first action to move over here. Now, I haven't got my measuring tape out, but I'm pretty sure that's within five inches of his move marker there. He's gonna be in some little bit of cover here, and he's gonna take a shot with his second action here. He got a two. He needed a close range of five or above. Now, he did have the option to using burst fire because he also has an automatic weapon, but there's no other uh, models around this guy, so it would have been wasted and put him out of ammo for no real good reason. So instead, he just took a regular shot at the guy, unfortunately missing. There were no other queens to throw down this turn, so we come to Jax, which just happens to be this guy right here. Now, if he can pull this off, a one-eyed Jack gives you a plus one in, con in shooting. So. The first thing he's gonna to like to do is he has several options here. He could get rid of his shock marker, but that would require both of his actions to eliminate it. This represents him 
kind of sitting back, getting his cool back under control. Uh, but in this case, he still wants to have an action left to shoot. So what he's gonna do is roll to see if he can remove this. Now this is taking a chance. If he rolls low enough, he may actually route from the field. If he rolls high enough, he'll get rid of it and still have an action. So what he needs is a six or above. He has a subtract one for each shock marker already on him. So we're gonna roll the dice. He got a one. So a one is the worst result you could possibly get. And a one or below, the model has decided, I'm not sticking around here, and he's removed from the table, representing him running off under fire. We'll pull this off, we'll remove the jack, and we'll be ready for 10s, 9s, 8s, 7s, 6s. All right, so it's another new turn. You can see some of our friends have brought in reinforcements here to help them in this particular fight. <clears throat> I've called out kings and I've called out queens, and I have not had any of those, so neither one of these guys is going to uh, activate. So we finally get the jacks. We're gonna activate this guy who just showed up with the jack. He has two actions. The two-eyed jack functions as a plus one on any close combat. So we've declared we're gonna close combat. He has two actions, he moves five. His first action is here to five to get there. <clears throat> his second action, he moves the second five inches and gets with an inch of the enemy. All he has to do is fall within an inch of the enemy. Now these two guys are considered to be close combat. The way close combat is resolved is both sides roll a D10. The white card die is gonna be for our guy here. Ooh, he rolls a 10. The brown trooper here rolls a die. He gets a four, all right? We look at the difference between the two rolls. In this case, he rolled a, he had a plus one close combat, so this 10 actually becomes an 11. That makes a difference of seven. On our wound chart, the we look at the uh, difference between the two of them, a one to two means there's no bonus to the wound chart. A three or four means that there's a plus one to the wound chart. On a five or six is a plus two. And we finally get to our plus seven, which is a plus three of the wound chart. So we find out what happens to him. We roll the dice. A seven plus three equals 10. That is a kill result. So our trooper here in the brown has been eliminated. Okay, so now we would go to the 10 card. No one has one a nine, an eight, a seven. We finally come to six. The trooper here in the house has a six to activate, but our trooper here who's out of ammo decides that he's gonna use the ace card as a wild card. Aces can be used as any card you want them to be. He is gonna choose for this to be a six of spades. So that's how we break ties in the game whenever there are two cards of the same uh, level. A spade comes before a heart, which comes before a diamond, which comes before a club. In this case, we're calling this fake six, a six of spades, allowing him to go before our six of hearts over here. Now, the six also has a bonus of letting you reload instantly. Normally, to reload, you have to spend both your actions and basically sit there while you load your weapon. So he gets to use a six, reload instantly, and take a shot at our guy in the door here. So he's gonna take his first action, take a shot. He gets a 10, dead on. We'll see what happens to him. A seven, this guy is wounded. Put him down there, ah! All right, he still has an action. He could try to hit this guy in the doorway again, but that seems a little bit excessive since he's already down and hurt. He needs to take a shot right here instead. Again, close range, but he gets a four. He needed a five or above to hit at that range. So his second shot was ineffective. It's the start of a new turn. Everyone's been dealt their cards. I call out kings. 
player decides to use the king card to activate this guy who's down with a wound. Now, it's not a queen of hearts, so he's not getting any instant removal of the wound, so instead he has to make a roll to recover from this wound. It's done the same way as we did for the shock marker earlier. He needs a six or above. Now, he has a minus one for every wound or shock marker he sustained earlier. So we're gonna roll the dice, subtract one from that, and it becomes four. That is not enough for him to recover. So he has one action left. He can't re-roll to try to recover again. So we're gonna have him crawl inside the building and hopefully out of the fight. I call out queens or any shacks. We come to tens. The commando here in gray has decided he needs to go. So he is going to take a shot at our with his first action. It's a trooper right in front of him. He rolls a one, ugh, out of ammo. That means he just sprayed indiscriminately, unable to hit him, maybe he's a little bit nervous. He still has an action left. He can't reload because that takes two consecutive turn, two consecutive actions to reload. Instead, he decides he's gonna take this up close and personal, using his second action to move within close combat range. You don't have to have an action left to fight close combat, you just have to be within an inch. So the two of them are gonna roll here. We got a difference of one. The dark, uh, with the, uh, the commando in gray being the winner. He rolls, gets only a two, plus one becomes a three. That's gonna put shock on our trooper right here. The commando has the option of pushing the player away, base the brown player away, either to keep him out of close combat range, hoping so that he can move next turn maybe before him. He can keep him right where he's at, holding this guy effectively in close combat, maybe hoping later that the guy here will cover and come join him in the fight. These two are essentially locked unless he should push him away. Also the option of switching places with him. That's really good if you were like on the edge of a cliff or something and he didn't want to fall off. In this case, he's going to push him away and keep that shock marker on him. Hoping that next turn, now that they're not in close combat, he could try to reload before this guy gets to activate. The next card is a nine card, which is, just happens to be this guy's card. He's going to activate. Now, again, he has the option of trying to get rid of that shock marker or just keeping it on him, knowing that it's a minus one off everything he does. He has a minus one on a shoot. If he went in here and fought, he'd be in a minus one for close combat. He actually moves slower. Instead of his five inch move, he would only move four because of the minus one for the shock. He's decided he's just gonna take the shot at the minus. So his first action, he's gonna shoot. He's at a minus one because of this. He normally needs a five or above. And we're gonna re-roll that because he went right in the middle. He got a five, he got a six minus one, which is the five, enough to hit him. We'll see what happens to him. He got a two. He threw some shock on that guy. But he still has another sh action. So he's gonna shoot again. Get in a minus one. Becomes a seven. Well, that's more than enough to hit him. So we're gonna roll again to see what happens. A two, another shock marker on this poor guy. All right, well, the battle's raged elsewhere across the table. We're still focusing on this one little quadrant we have here. Now, our player has a bit of a conundrum here. He's got a guy who's down and wounded here. He's got a guy who's out of ammo here, and he's got two shock markers on him. This is what he's looking at. Now, the ace is a wild card. Should he use it as a queen of hearts to automatically get rid of this guy's wound and stand him up? Does he use it as a queen of spades, which will immediately remove all of these shock markers, and then he could remove the out of ammo marker. He can't get rid of this thing until the shock markers are gone. So what's it gonna be? Well, I think he's gonna decide to use this as a queen of hearts, which will get rid of this wound. 
this fella will stand up and still have both his actions, and he's gonna use them to pepper this guy who put him there in the first place. Still close range, definitely doesn't want to use burst because he'll end up hitting his own guy. The first shot's a miss. The second shot, right on target, needed a five. Let's see what happens to him. He gets a six, which is a second shock marker on this. No, it's actually a wound on this guy. So he goes down. Now, after Queens becomes Jacks, well, that's what this guy has. It just got knocked down. He has a Jack of Clubs. He goes next. About the only thing he can do is try to get up from this wound. So he needs a six or above. That's how what we need for recovery is our target. He is wounded and there's a shock marker. That means minus two off of his roll. He gets a six, which goes down to five, four. Not enough, not a six or above. So he has blown his recovery roll. He's allowed to crawl a couple inches. Even though it's not really gonna help him from this guy over here. I call out tens, which activates this guy right here. Now, he could roll in and try to finish him off in close combat. That would be kinda, of, he'd have a minus two from his uh, shock markers. He could try to roll off the shock, or, well, those are about my choices. So, I think this guy is pretty uh, bloodthirsty, so he's gonna use his move to go in here. Again, if you don't like all these markers, you can keep them on your uh, record sheets. So, I like him here because this tells me that he has a minus two, he also has a minus two, one for the wound, one for the shock, and then one for being prone. So the black dice is gonna be this guy, and the white, guy's, and the white dice is gonna be for this guy. Minus two becomes a four. Our one here goes down to, uh, let me see, minus three. Oh, thank you, high school education. Minus two, so that means we have a difference of six. So that gives us a plus two on the to wound chart. We're gonna add one to whatever we roll because of this wound that's already here. We got an eight, which would normally be a wound. However, plus one becomes a nine, which is a kill, and he is removed.